Praise the Lord. Our text this morning is the text from which our theme for the year comes, Psalm 150. Psalm 150. I even wish that we can uh, project it so that we can read Psalm 150 together. It's not such a long psalm. It's just six verses. So let's, let's read Psalm 150 together. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that today is the second day of the year 2022. You are highly exalted and lifted up. And we join the whole of creation to celebrate your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that it has pleased you to bring us into the beginning of a year, a new year. It may have uncertainties, it may have pitfalls, it may have difficulties, but our hope is in you, our God. And so we shall not be moved. As Mary was told, with God, all things are possible. So we pray in the name of Jesus, that you will hold our hand and lead us and guide us through this year. May our weaknesses, O oh God, be turned into strength. May our failures, our failures be turned into successes. We pray in the name of Jesus that you, you birth in our hearts a passion for prayer and for your word. And you will subdue from our lives, anything that does not please you, protect us from evil and deliver us from anything that is called crisis. It shall be a year in which your people will praise you. And so this morning, we thank you that you are with us in our praise, in our prayer, in our petitions, and especially as we hear your word. Open thou my lips that I'll be able to show forth your praise, open the hearts and ears of your people that will be able to receive your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. If you have nothing to praise God for, I praise him for life. We want to thank God that he has spared our lives. Whether you are here physically or you are in another location listening to us online, this year we pray that God will give us cause to praise him. Amen. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything. And I'm going to end today's message by reminding you that at the beginning of creation, after everything had been made, we are told that God breathed, breathed into us and the human being became, came to life, became a living being. So if you are a living being made in the image of God, then this invitation is to you. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. There are a number of terms and expressions that come to mind with the mention of the word praise. Praise. 
praise goes with the word approval. Approval. It also goes with the word admiration. We admire things that are positive, things that are beautiful, things that are nice. The only person who will not look on you the way you look and your outfit and admire it is your enemy. So don't make yourself an enemy of God. You won't survive. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It goes, a, a praise itself is a positive thing. So don't entertain negativity and as I said on watch night, don't be cynical in your life. Learn to praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise comes with beauty. It comes when something is magnificent. If it's nice, it's nice. You may not like the person, but if she is beautiful, she is beautiful. You can't change it. Sometimes we try to run things down because they are not for us. When everybody is saying it's nice, you are looking for the mistake. Maybe there's a performance and everybody is praising the thing. It is only witches and demons who don't see something when it is nice. I'm telling you, it's true. Praise goes with benevolence. There are people who are simply good. They bless others. Praise goes with things that are attractive. To praise is to extol, to glorify, to magnify, and to bless. And in the Christmas period, we learned how Mary magnified the, the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And the psalmist, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then he goes on to recount the things that God has done. He heals my diseases, he forgives my sins, he renews my youth like that of the eagle, and so on. In other words, I thank God that I I have health and the work of my hands are doing well, even in the areas where things are not going well. There are other areas which I can look and say, praise the Lord. So praise has to do with the extol, glorify, magnify. So these are the things that we want to do this year. This is the invitation that the psalmist is throwing to us, extol God glorify him, magnify his name and exalt him. Praise is the positive side of certain negative responses to life. Praise is the positive side of certain negative responses that sometimes we have to life. Condemnation. People who condemn everything cannot have a spirit of gratitude. And I think I have said to you before, if you don't have the spirit of gratitude, you become a bitter person. And bitter people are never happy in life. It doesn't matter what they have. They can never be happy. Because God is not a bitter God. He even told us that if we are slapped on one cheek, we should turn the other. God doesn't like bitterness. And then praise is the positive side of to chastise or demean. There are people in life like that. Somebody I know personally sits in the chair and if you make a contribution he doesn't like, he will run you down. So when he goes to meetings, he's the only one who talks. Because he's blind, he can't even see. 
that people are quiet, not because they have nothing to say, but because of the very negative response. Anything you say, he will read some meaning into it. So we go to meetings with him. We we'll listen to him. Have your way. We share the grace. We go our way. But the downside is that he makes terrible and shameful mistakes. Because nobody wants to talk about his matter. Everybody is quiet. So, to demean, to criticize, to reject. And for those of us who have entered into that culture, which I have told you is not Christian, those who like to curse. Don't do it. It's not a reflection of the nature of Christ. Those of you who heard me on radio this past week, it is not in the nature of Christ for believers to heap curses on other people. It doesn't matter how offended you are. And any pastor who has made that part of his culture has lost his sense of calling. Because we are called to preach the word of salvation that people will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. We are not called to curse people. I've told my students not to do it. When you have these negative responses and emotions in any society, it means people are ungrateful, people are angry, people are cynical, people are insincere. But praise belongs to the nature of God. And if we are created in God's image, then we are a people who are invited to live lives of praise. Let everything that has breath. Do you have breath? Who has breath? Let me see you by hand. Wow. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the psalm before us, Psalm 150, invites us to do something specific. And that is to praise the Lord. That's how the psalm starts. It starts with the expression, praise the Lord. And it ends with an exclamation mark. Which means we are being asked to do something that is mandatory. To praise the Lord. The second part of verse 1 says... Praise God in his sanctuary. The sanctuary is the place where we meet to worship. In other words, there is a relationship between praise and worship. But most importantly, the psalmist also says, praise him in his mighty firmament. Amen? Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him in the sanctuary, but also praise him in his mighty firmament. The mighty firmament stands for the universe, that which we see and that which we do not see, the firmament. So when the psalmist says, praise him in his mighty firmament, the psalmist is saying, the praise of God cannot be limited to any particular location. Praise him in the sanctuary. Yes, where we have gathered. But also, praise him in his mighty firmament. The the, the firmament belongs to God. So praise him for his mighty firmament. The things that his hand has made. And as one songwriter would say, he has also given us eyes to see them. Amen. Praise must be a constant part of your life. At the end of the service, at the end of the sermon, let me say I will ask uh, Patrick Adakwe to sing Psalm 95 for us. And Psalm 95, when you start, it says, Oh, come. It's also an invitation. Oh, come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Verse 2. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. 
and let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Amen. So it's an invitation. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Praise in whatever we do. And praise is associated with certain actions. And that's what Psalm 95 tries to describe for us. It says, let us sing to the Lord. And God is described as the God of our salvation. He's not only the God who saves us in Christ for eternity, but he's also our refuge and strength in this life. He is our protector. He's the one who redeems us. Don't give yourself extra work by going after your enemies to curse them. If God is your refuge and strength, he will take care of them. You don't have to instruct God on how to deal with people. So he's the God of our salvation. He delivers us from evil. It's a story that happened just before the day before Christmas. I haven't told you. This Christmas, I decided I'm going to visit all the people who have served the seminary ahead of me as president. Some of them have gone to be with the Lord. So I went to see one person's widow. And then the second one I went to see is somebody who taught me. And when I was hired as a young lecturer in 1994, he was the first president I worked with. He's not been too well. And I went to visit him. But his house is on a, a very high hill and very rocky. So we went 24th parked in the yard, went to see him, and it was a very, very moving visit. Some of those visits can even move you to tears. There's somebody I had known as a young minister, and unfortunately, the condition is that he has lost his, his uh, speech, and when he saw me, he couldn't get up, but I he wanted to get up and and give me a hug. Initially, I didn't understand what he wanted to do. Then I understood. Of course, because of COVID, I wasn't sure whether to move forward or to stand where I was. But eventually, I did, looking at the noise he was making. So I went close. He hugged me. He couldn't speak. So he blessed me. When you do the sign of the cross, I know he's blessing me. Whatever it is, I left his presence just reflecting on life. And when I sat in the vehicle to reverse out of the yard, I suddenly felt that my side of the vehicle had gone further down than I wanted it. And to my left was a valley, very deep valley. Apparently, when I reversed, the back tie to my right had climbed a rock and so the face of my vehicle was looking down. Those standing direct me were screaming. My glasses were rolled up. I was enjoying the air condition. So I couldn't hear. And I'm happy I didn't hear because I would have been scared and lost control. My the end of the story is that I'm standing here. <laughs> So God is the God of our salvation. And when I managed gradually to negotiate my way for the tide to come down and press and break, I don't even remember what I was praying. Oh, I just don't remember what happened. But you know, the gentleman who took me to the place, I was just asking myself, if he had been standing on the left of the vehicle and this vehicle had rolled down to the valley and all kinds of things were running through my mind. But then I had to quickly refocus that God is the God of our salvation. 
there are things that he delivers us from that we may never see or even understand. So God is the rock of our salvation. The psalmist says in Psalm 95, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. In other words, praise is directed to God for who he is. He is the rock of our salvation. Praise is directed to him and not to anybody else. So Psalm 150, which is the psalm we are looking at. Verse 2, the psalmist continues with a short description of why we praise God. He says, praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. God is almighty. And on, on, on uh, watch night, I told you he is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, he is omniscient. The psalmist says, praise him in his surpassing greatness. It is not something that human beings can comprehend with normal eyes and ears. So when Isaiah encountered the surpassing greatness in the temple, scripture says he just went prostrate. said, what am I seeing? I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among the people of unclean lips. It took God himself to bring the cleansing fire from heaven to cleanse him. That is what happens when you have a good sense of the surpassing greatness of God. You come to terms with your nothingness. And it is in our nothingness that we approach him for help. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. So verse 2 says we praise God for two reasons. We praise God for what he does. His mighty deeds. Let everything that has breath, that is part of God's mighty deeds. We praise him for his surpassing greatness. It is precisely because of the surpassing greatness of God that in Psalm 91, 95 verse 1, which we read, it says, God is the rock of our salvation. Amen. What the psalmist had in mind was deliverance through the Red Sea, feeding them with manna and parting the Red Sea for his people to walk through the conquest of Jericho and all the enemies they faced. God delivered them from the hands of these enemies. May God do that for you this year. As you live a life of praise, may God enable you to recount his deeds of salvation. And we have a certain glimpse of this kind of salvation, practical salvation in the everyday course of life. In another psalm, Psalm 1, 2, 4, verses 2 and 5, it says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. So God is the God of our salvation. We have been mandated to praise the Lord because he is the God of our salvation. He is our deliverer and he is the one, as uh, Zachariah said in his uh, Benedictus, the one who rescues us from the hands of our enemies that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness all our days. So God's salvation has both a physical and a spiritual dimension. The physical side is the one we read about in Psalm 124. Blessed be the Lord God who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. 
The snare is broken and we have escaped. The psalm, Psalm 124, I mean, then concludes with the words, Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. Hallelujah to Jesus. So that is the physical side. God rescues his people from their enemies. He protects us in our going out, in our coming in. Psalm 121 describes him as the God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. God, I have said to you before, is beyond the logic of sleep. So he watches over his own. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The spiritual sense refers to the kind of eternal salvation we have in Christ. It's described for us in the book of Revelation 1, the second part of verse 5 to 6. It says, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God, to him be glory dominion forever and ever. Amen. So our praise concludes with what God has done in Christ. That's why in the book of Revelation chapter 7, 9 to 11, we can't read that. It describes, it says that salvation belongs to our God. Salvation. And it's salvation both in its spiritual and its physical senses. Don't talk about salvation as if we are only saved so that we go to heaven. Jesus says he came that we may have life and have it in abundance. In this life, God has put us here to enjoy his creation and be happy. So let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And the psalmist even shows us how to do it. Praise him with trumpet and sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clapping cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Praise him with anything you have. The psalm. Psalmist then concludes with the punch verse. The punch line. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Can, you see, the Psalms contain all kinds of things. In fact, Psalm 35, for example, is a Psalm that most of us like. Contend with those who contend with me. So on. It has Psalms of lamentation. It has Psalms of, uh, it has what we call imprecatory Psalms. Lamentation is when the, the psalmist laments his suffering and all those things. Imprecatory is where he calls God to destroy people, call the fire of God, let them be hungry, let the children. The psalmist can also be frustrated. But after everything, 150 psalms. The very last line, the conclusion to 150 Psalms says, praise the Lord. Just three words. Praise the Lord. That is the concluding verse of all the Psalms. Breath is not simply a sign of life. It's also a sense of of our belonging to God. He breathed into us. And that's how we become God's image. Let everything that belongs to God, that's what the psalmist is saying. Praise the Lord. Praise to the holiest in the height. One hymn writer says, and in the depth be praised. In all his words, most wonderful most sure in all his ways. The second stanza says, oh loving wisdom of our God. When all was sin and shame, the second Adam to the fight and to the rescue came. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We've got to praise the Lord who revealed himself in Christ, broke his body, 
shed his blood for us so that he can rescue us from all that destroys and put our feet on higher ground. May God give you a story of praise this year so that we can all live to bless his name. Amen.